Operator One, proceed with Operation Eagle. Now watch carefully, Dr. Beaker, and you'll see our problem. Well, that seemed easy enough. Oh, it is. The problem we have is to get the sling tightened ready for the lift quick enough. You see, in time of war, we have to get tanks across rivers, and if the bridges have been blown up, well, this could get us out of a jam. Elevator One reporting. Sling located, ready for lifting. Well, that didn't take long. Yeah, it seems pretty quick to us standing here, Dr. Beaker. But if the enemy had been firing, the helicopter would have been shot down by now. It's just not quick enough. Elevator one, changing to horizontal flight. Uh, uh, Colonel Harris, look. Well, that was a close shave, Colonel. Like I was saying, Dr. Beaker, we may be on the wrong track altogether. Yes, I, I fear so, Colonel. Uh, a magnetic grab would be quicker in operation and certainly more reliable. Uh, that is, of course, if we could produce a magnet powerful enough. Dr. Beaker sure got himself a pretty important assignment from the Army. Yes, Mark. Sending down all these tanks for him to play with. Six of them, aren't they? Yeah, must be top secret, too, the way they're patrolling this place with jets. It's been a week now, Mitch, since Dr. Beaker started on his secret project. I wonder when he'll be through. <laughs> At his factory. Most, most satisfactory. Dr. Beaker? Dr. Beaker? Are you okay? <coughs> oh, don't, don't worry, Jimmy. I'm all right. These things can't always be expected to work. First time, you know. First test unsatisfactory. <coughs> Second test, most unsatisfactory. Satisfactory, most satisfactory. Yes, Mike, I think it's checkmate. Mike, uh, Professor, I think I've done it. I think I can claim success. Jimmy, you stay here with Mitch. I've got an idea this could be pretty dangerous. Stand by for another explosion, Mitch. If this is anything like the other test Dr. Beaker's carried out, you better plug your ears. <laughs> And uh, now, gentlemen, I want to demonstrate Beaker's Magnet, Mark IV, capable of lifting 100 tons. 100 tons? And such a small magnet. It's amazing. Now, uh, this metal plate, uh, suspended by this steel cable, will be drawn towards the magnet. Uh, and as you see, the other end of the cable is attached to a machine that will register the pulling power of the magnet. Uh, now, uh, we'll build up the charge. Here we go again. <laughs> Ready. And now I will switch on the magnetic field. By G. 
you've. It's better than I ever dared hope for. I can even feel it pulling the buckle on my belt. Oh! My mother! Mitch, what do you suppose is going on in there? Satisfactory. Most satisfactory. I'll say it's satisfactory. It's proved that it'll lift over 150 tons. It's pulled out every screw and nail in the lab. It's broken your belt and your pants are falling down. And now will you please switch it off? Charging starboard. 5,000. 10,000. 13,000. 15,000. In the locker. Fire one. Mike will soon be airborne, Colonel, and then we will demonstrate with Supercar how the new magnetic grab works. Oh, you mean you fitted the magnetic attachment in Supercar? Well, what happens when you switch on? Doesn't it affect Supercar's control? Uh, no, Colonel. We have been able to isolate it. Uh, the magnetic field only works in a downward direction. Full boost vertical. <laughs> And here he comes now, Colonel. In contact now. Switching on magnetic field. Full boost vertical. It works, Dr. Beaker. Of course it works. An excellent job, Dr. Beaker. An excellent job. And the timing is just right. Mike, will now take Supercar through the sound barrier. With a 70-ton tank attached to it? Isn't that kind of dangerous? Danger is Mike's business. He's done it! He's done it! By Jove, he's done it! He sure is a great pilot. And you sure are a great cook, Professor. <laughs> Thank you, Colonel. I try my best. Yes, yes. Well, as I was saying, uh, Dr. Beaker, uh, we certainly are grateful to you for helping us solve our problem, and I will personally see to it that you are well rewarded for your services to the United States government. Oh, uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't mention it. Uh, well, glad to have been of service. Um, I will give you the plans so that you can build the device and we will keep the one that is installed on Supercar. Uh, we may find it very useful. Gee, Dr. Beaker, you're famous now. Yes, uh, it would appear that a, a number of people have heard of my invention. Uh, this letter is from an American company in England. What's it about, Dr. Beaker? Oh, a new project uh, they are about to test. They have invited me along to launch it. You mean we're going to England? Well, you know how it is with Beaker, Jimmy. Any excuse to visit the old country. It sounds exciting, Dr. Beaker. When do we start? Right now, Jimmy. Come on, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Now, Dr. Beaker, would you mind telling us what this project is that you're going to launch? Uh, of course, Mike. Uh, an atomic engine has been fitted to a diesel train, and I have been invited to travel on the test run. Sounds very interesting, Dr. Beaker. Yes, very interesting. We should arrive in London in about an hour, I guess. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Can I help you? Good evening, madame. Two single rooms, please. You're just lucky, sir. We have only two rooms left. I've just booked a party in from America. Mr. Mike Mercury, you know. The famous test pilot. He's in room 206. Thank you, madame. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, now, listen, everyone. I've got an important announcement to make. I, I wasn't going to tell you now, but uh, 
I'm so excited. I, I just can't wait. I'm going to drive the train tomorrow. You? Drive the train? Yourself? The professor and myself, yes. You see, it requires scientists to drive an atomic train, not an engine driver. This I must see. Hey, Doc, where's the train standing at the moment? Well, I understand that it's on a railway siding at uh, Thameside Station. Come, friend Zarin. We have work to do. Dirty work to do. <laughs> We finished with that, you fool. Let's have some light on the blueprint. Now, we have fixed the atomic reactor so that when they start the train tomorrow, they won't be able to stop it. And do you know who will be on board that train, friend Zarin? No, Master Spike. A very important person who has caused much trouble to the foreign government who pays us so handsomely for our services. Now then, if we file away the top of the screws, they will not be able to undo them. And then they will be helpless to stop the train crashing into the station at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> There is great excitement at the station here today as we await the new atomic train's maiden journey. It doesn't look any different from a normal train because this is only a test run. The atomic engine has been fitted into a standard diesel electric vehicle. And if successful, the railways intend to build an entirely new, modern atomic train for this run. The prototype having been developed by an American company. Gee, Mike, now, wish I could drive that train. Guess they're about due to start off any moment yes. now, aren't they? Yes, Jimmy, they're scheduled to leave at 10 o'clock. Certainly a great moment. And they're off. As she pulls out of the station, the crowds wave and cheer it on its way. Wonderful, Professor. I've always wanted to drive a train. Don't forget it will be my turn soon, Dr. Beaker. All right, Professor. I've got to attend to the atomic reactor soon, uh, so you will be able to take over. Mike Mercury calling atomic train. Mike Mercury calling. Over. Uh, hello, Mike. Beaker here. How's it going, Doc? Oh, fine, Mike. Just fine. Okay. Hey, Doc, if you have any trouble, we're standing by here close to supercar. Over and out. <laughs> All right, Popkiss. Now, uh, you can have some fun. Uh, I'm going to look at the atomic reactor. Uh, don't worry, Beaker. I have everything under control. Mm-hmm. Yes, satisfactory. Most satisfactory. That's funny. Dr. Beaker, there is something wrong. I cannot seem to reduce speed. The controls seem to have developed a mind of their own. Beaker, do you hear me? Uh, I hear you, Professor. Uh, we have trouble, I'm afraid. Uh, is the train gaining speed? Yes, Doctor, and I can't reduce it. Uh, the, the, hold on, Professor. I'm going to remove the inspection cover uh, to see what I can do. Hurry, Beaker. We are gaining speed rapidly now. Say, Jimmy, be a good boy and go down to the lobby and get all the newspapers you can. Beaker will want to keep all the press cuttings. Sure, Mike. Now, Mitch, 
Lay off those cards while I'm gone. Sabotage. It must be sabotage. Somebody has filed off the heads of these screws. And without special equipment, it will be impossible to remove it. What is our speed, Professor? I just dread to think, Pico. We must be going at least 200 miles per hour, and we are still gaining. Uh, uh, Professor, uh, we must keep our heads. The reactor has been sabotaged, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Oh, Match, look what you've done. I've got the papers, Mike. Say, I saw two men downstairs, and they looked just like Master Spy and Zarin. Master Spy and Zarin? Oh, you must be imagining things, Jimmy. Mike Mercury, this is Beaker. Emergency, are you receiving me? Hello, Dr. Beaker. Mike here, what's the trouble? Hello, Mike. The atomic reactor driving the train has been sabotaged, and we are hurtling along completely out of control. I estimate that we are traveling at 400 miles an hour, and we can't stop. Uh, can you help us? I hear you, Doc. What's wrong with the reactor? I only wish I knew. If I did, I could do something about it. But whoever sabotaged the train has filed down the screws on the reactor cover, and I cannot examine it. Well, stand by, Dr. Beaker. i got to think of the best thing to do. Roger. Standing by. Sabotage. Okay, Beaker, I've got a plan. I'll call you as soon as I can. Right, Jimmy, downstairs to the lobby, pronto. How long do you think it will be, Dr. Beaker, before we come to the end of the line? At this speed, a half an hour at the most. A very fat man and a very thin man, you say. Why? You must mean Mr. Masterspoon and his friend. Yeah, that's him. Where is he? Oh, he left about half an hour ago by car. Said something about Brighton, I believe. Yeah, that figures. Yeah, he's gone to Brighton to watch the train crash. Jimmy, get Mitch. Meet me on the roof by supercar and move. Soon we will arrive at the station and watch Dr. Beaker's train crash at a fantastic speed. You will then hear the loudest explosion that has ever been heard. Full boost vertical. Jimmy, I'm following the road that leads to Brighton. Watch out and tell me if you can see Master Spy's car. Sure thing, Mike. No sign of him yet, Mike. Keep looking, Jimmy. Supercar to Beaker, supercar to Beaker. Hello, Mike. We wonder what has happened to you. Now listen, Professor, we're chasing Master Spy. He's your saboteur. We'll catch up with him any minute now, and then I'll make him talk. And you'll know what he's done to the reactor, man. Good, Mike. Only a hurry. There's not much time. Do my ears deceive me, or can I hear that dreaded sound of supercar? Mike, I can see him. I can see him, Mike. Good boy, Jimmy. Here we go. It is supercar. Oh, it sounds as if they're going to land on top of us, Master Spy. They have landed on top of us. <laughs> Magnetic lock to pick him up. That's right, Jimmy. And now I'm going to make him talk. What's happened, Master Spy? We're flying. What fiendish trick are they playing? Magnetic lock off. All right, Jimmy. Now we'll hover alongside until Master Spy decides to talk. Gee, I bet this is the first time that a car's been balanced on top of a TV mast, Mike. Right. Full boost vertical. Now listen, 
Listen carefully, Master Spy. We know you've sabotaged the train, and you're going to stay right where you are until you tell us exactly what you did. A quick, Master Spy. Lean backwards. Oh, oh, quick, Master Spy. Lean forward. Mr. Mercury, I give in. But I cannot help you. Nothing can stop that train now. Absolutely nothing. Please believe me. He's lying, Mike. He must be. No, Jimmy, I don't think so. I believe you, Master Spy. You're such a coward, I know you'd tell me the truth just to save your neck. I'll come back later and pick you up. Quickly, Master Spy. Lean forward. No, no. Lean backward, Master Spy. Supercar to Beaker. Master Spies wrecked the reactor beyond repair. I'm coming up to try and stop the train with Supercar. I'll fire the retro rockets and hope the force will slow it down, with Supercar magnetically locked on the roof of the train. There's the track over there, Mike. Engines. Okay, Mike. We're right over the top. Right. Down we go. He's made it! Mike's landed on the roof of the engine and locked on with the magnetic grab. Wonderful! Now, if he fires his rockets, it should stop supercar and the train. Firing retro rockets. Out, Mike. Say, are you two train drivers okay? You sure gave us a scare. Well, thanks to you two, we are perfectly all right. Well, thanks, gentlemen, for the compliment. And now I've got to rescue another couple of guys whose fate rather hangs in the balance at the moment. <laughs> Quick, Master Spy, lean backwards. Quick, Master Spy, lean forward. Backward. Forward. Oh! 